Hello and welcome to Verses of Enchantment. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. This video is kindly sponsored by Nacht Flam, and we are hopefully going to be able to defeat some wizards in poetic prose duels. Yes, indeed. So, what do I mean by that? Well, this is a roguelike deck builder, but in a very unique fashion, you are going to create decks made out of specific keywords that are then going to constitute a variety of different poems. And these poems are then going to carry forward in the gameplay that will influence the future cards that you play. So let me see if I can actually uh, demonstrate that a little bit. So this is our character right now. We've already uh, fought her, so we can now make our way on. This is basically after two duels or so on and so forth that I've done myself. Let's just move on over here. There we go. Um, oh, okay, apparently she wants to duel us, so why not? Let's just go in and we'll fight Ilana here. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that we both have 100 HP. Now, you, you, you obviously need to reduce someone to 0 HP to be able to make that work. But now you can see every single one of these cards has some kind of... Um, category associated with it. So in other words, as you can see here, we have two Gloom cards. We uh, we actually have three Gloom cards in a row here. So if I want to do, I could just play all Gloom cards. And then if there is a card that I actually draw in the next round that gives me a bonus based on how many Gloom cards I played, then it's going to be super effective. And same thing if I were to play an ego card, like for example, this ego card right here. If your last poem contains two brilliance words, draw one card from your deck. So these are all the kinds of things that you're, you're going to need to, you know, actually make use of to achieve victory in this game. Anyway, I'm going to play sword here. Um, heart, uh, yeah, this is actually fantastic as well. Look at this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to play all the gloom cards. So we're going to go for sword. Silence, which is going to inflict Dispirit, which means that Ilana is going to deal 50% less damage on her turn. But, as well as that, it combos into Sorrow. So you see here, if your opponent is heartbroken or dispirited, you deal 15 damage. So I'm dealing 5 more damage than I would normally if I were to use a card like Storm here. And now we're going to write our poem. And we're going to Dispirit Alana here, and we're going to use a little bit of Sorrow. And then you can see exactly what kind of poem we're going to write once the round is over. She's also going to do her thing. And as you can see, she's playing Sorrow here, which is not actually going to do anything. Basically, none of this is actually going to do anything at all. And there you go. Super nice and simple. Now, this is my poem here. We see our sires, but what are they to us? What hap doth Sorrow in their memory? but that the sword which gave them birth finds out. This silence and this solitude of tears. No record lives among the ancient dead. Oh, no, none living ever yet knew. Exactly. So, obviously, you could see here the various keywords. They are going to obviously give you a little bit of um, a kind of like thesaurus kind of stuff, so you can kind of get an idea what these actually are. And, um, yeah, it just kind of gives you this wonderful atmosphere and uh, medieval kind of, um, shall we say, tension to it? I think that's really, really cool, actually. Anyway, inflict one heartbreak for every gloom word in your last poem. This is actually fantastic because I literally just used three gloom cards. So I'm going to use love straight away. Inflict one heartbreak, which basically means that she can't restore health. So if she does have a healing, um, healing ability... She's not going to be able to do anything with that. Uh, we could also do this. I want to actually... Yeah, we'll, we'll do this and then we'll deal 10 damage, I suppose. So something like this. So there we go. We've just inflicted four heartbreaks. So basically what that means is that for four turns, Elana will not be able to regenerate health which is insanity. That is so incredibly good. So as you can see, we are now writing another poem. If you want to read that, then obviously you can pause the video and you can do that right now. Uh, but we're just going to continue on to the next round here. She's inflicting some soul burn to me. 
Ah, uh, she's also uh, distracting me a little bit and inflicting heartbreak as well. Ooh, that, okay, things are getting a bit harsh. Obviously, as you can tell, this is very strategic. And you may not think so because every single card seems relatively straightforward, right? Well, that's the thing. Every single opponent you defeat, and this is just one of the game modes, by the way. There is also a, um, as far as I'm aware, there is a PvP mode as well as a drafting mode or something like that. I'm playing the, the campaign right now. And you can unlock up to 100 cards in the campaign. And you can even create your very own decks. So no doubt there's going to be some people out there that will just create the most amazing um, deck in the world. And it's just going to be absolutely incredible to see. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's see what I can do here. So obviously I'm not going to be able to restore health to myself. Discard a card at the end of my turn and lose 7 health at the start of my turn. Or I could cure the soul burn from myself, which I think I might actually like to do. And we're probably going to be inflicting a soul burn to her and dealing 10 damage. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to inflict the soul burn and there we are. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to discard a card. I'm going to restore, um, I'm going to actually not restore, but I'm going to discard this card here because there's no point in me having this for the next three turns because I'm heartbroken for another three turns. So it doesn't really make much sense for me to keep it, right? So we're just going to continue dealing damage. We're going to try to remove the maximum amount of damage that we can take by removing our soul burn. And then we're going to continue onward. So you can see exactly what this game is all about already. And that's the wonderful thing about it. It is indeed very simple to learn, but it is going to be extremely difficult to master because there are so many different facets that you're going to have to think about and as you can see deal five damage uh, for every card your opponent has in their hand so they're going to be dealing 10 damage to me and obviously if I were a, um, a hoarding individual then I would have so many more cards and uh, I would have died or I would have taken massive damage okay so inflict heartbreak I could always, always do this. Ooh, this is nice. Oh, I like this. If your last poem contains a brilliant word, inflict two soul burn. I am a huge fan of damage over time effects in games like this. And so I'm probably going to want to do something like that. Let's inflict some more damage. I'm just going to go for damage, damage, damage all over the place here. And we're going to be dealing, uh, what is it, 14 damage over the two turns. And that's going to take her to... Mm. I just need two more damage cards, basically. I need two more damage cards, and then I will be... Uh, then I'll be pretty good. Then I'll be pretty happy with that. Okay, so she has to discard a card there to be able to attack. And then we can do something now. Okay, so we've got 10. Cure Soul Burn for myself. I don't have any Soul Burn. I can inflict Heartbreak, but she doesn't have any ability to heal herself right now. But I don't have the ability to actually eliminate her yet. Oh, that's sad. All right, fine, fine. Okay, fine. Uh, well, what am I going to do? Okay, I guess I'm just going to do this. Um, ooh, okay, that's harsh. I, I can't really do much. I guess we're just going to play a Brilliance card just in case we get another one of those Soul Burn things. And as you can see, one more turn is going to get her dead. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. She's going to inflict Soul Burn to me. And she's also going to do another 15 damage. This is actually the closest I've come to being eliminated. Because I've actually played this relatively well in my uh, previous battles. Um, but for some reason, this time around, I'm not having a great time. Okay, here we go. Let's play this. Oh, wow. This is... Yeah, this is a... A done deal. That is indeed a done deal. There we go. And we managed to win the duel. And we now have the ability to choose one card out of three, or we can get some gold. Now, you can see in the top right there, those are our resources. So what do resources do? Well, gold is used to purchase rations or cards. Rations are the second resource. And so, as you can see right there, we have 17 rations. That basically allows us to traverse the map. So whenever we make a move on the map, it consumes one ration. That's how that works. Anyway, I'm going to pick one card out of three here. Mm, I'm probably going to go for... 
Ooh. Uh, I'm going to go for Queen, I think. Deal 5 damage for every card your opponent has in their hand. If they have 3 cards, you're dealing 15 damage. That's pretty good, in my opinion. So we're going to take that. Sounds like a pretty effective way of dealing damage. So we don't have to worry about Soul Burn or anything like that. And now we can continue onward over here. Okay, is she still actually following me? Yeah, she is actually still following me, surprisingly enough. They, they're all moving around, as you can see. Can I actually move this way? Yes, I can. There we go. She's going somewhere else now, at least. So we can now go over this way. I've got to be super careful, though, because I really do not want to... Um, I, uh, I don't really want to have issues with, um, with my rations. You claim to be educated in the art of poetry? Preposterous. Allow me to demonstrate the difference in our skills. Okay, sure. Why not? Okay, let's uh, let's do battle against this fellow and see how he is. So, oh wow, we're getting some really nice cards to begin with right here. This is real nice. Okay, let's see what we can do. I'm going to be going for Soulburn. Oh, I'd love to go for more damage actually than Soulburn. Yeah, we're going to just go super, super hard on the damage here. Massive front load damage on him. And that is already 70. But the problem is he may have the ability to heal himself. Or, never mind, he's going all out too. Look at that. He's going all out. Okay, yeah, he's inflicted some soul burn, but that's fine. I'm going to inflict soul burn. I should have inflicted dispirited to him, actually, all things considered. But we can actually do that now. Oh, this is perfect. Look at this. We're inflicting three soul burn right here. This is really, really good. Okay, so three soul burn, that's um, 21 damage and also dispirited. So if he wants to do more damage to me, it's going to be reduced by 50%, which is absolutely perfect. So I'm very much hoping that we'll continue to have good luck in regards to our draws because it seems like it's going to come down to that. Okay, heartbreak, he can't heal himself. Might be a good idea to inflict him with that and then use sorrow because that's going to deal 15 damage if he's heartbroken at the same time so that's what we're going to do we're going to inflict heartbreak first of all then we'll do sorrow and then we'll deal 10 damage with sword there we go nice that was that's 25 damage being done right there and obviously we do still have soul burn active on him which is very good and let's see what he's going to play. Okay, this is not going to do anything, actually, is it? Draw one card and then discard one. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, he discarded the thing that did 20 damage. Okay, this is actually kind of one of those cards that is much more difficult to play. As you can see, if your last poem contains an ego and a brilliance card, deal 20 damage. So you need to be very specific about what you play to be able to make this work. So... Bit difficult, bit difficult. Anyway, uh, ooh, here we go. Inflict two to spirit. Okay, let's do that. What else do we have? Cure Soulburn for myself. Does he have any Soulburn cards right now? He does not. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Restore 10 health to myself. Yeah, probably going to do that, and we'll do this. There we go. Sounds like a good idea. We're dealing 10 damage once again. We're going to take him down to 14 HP. So once more, I actually need to do... Uh, two 10 damage attacks or one soul burn and one attack and that should be good. And here's another poem. So while the night is dark and long and I am far from my true lover, to you no doubt, to you no gift of joys belong. The scorn to tell, for this, for this, time owes her gold. You owe me love, to you. Indeed, indeed. And obviously it uses all of the wording from the previous cards that you played. So, yes. Anyway, uh, if you do actually love the entire theming like I do, then you should probably add it to your Steam wishlist. It sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Anyway, um, inflict... Ooh, okay, wait a minute. What do we want to do here? Mm, draw one card from my deck. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do Soul Burn. I guess I'll do Soul Burn in this, and that's going to be enough, I suppose. As long as he's not able to cure his soul burn because obviously he can it has the potential no nope, never mind we actually won that okay and we unlocked a new card sleeve so obviously you can change how your cards look if you so desire i can take 100 gold or i can go for one card out of three i'm going to go for the cards again and let's have a look Ooh, yeah this is the this is the pride card that i uh saw in his deck if your last poem contains ego and brilliance deal 20 damage that's actually insane 
Oh, should I do it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it for the higher difficulty. The higher difficulty curve for that. Sounds like a fun idea. Being able to deal 20 damage? Really? Come on now. All right, me defeated by some common hick. I concede you have some skill, child, but be assured our next duel will end differently. All right, well, I highly doubt that, sir. Goodbye. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually going to be moving on over here, and we can buy some things, as you can see. If we buy, we can get 46. That's actually pretty good. Whenever you're in a village or city, you can trade. Use the arrows in the trading menu to buy or sell rations at the price listed in between. The prices change over time, so keep an eye out for good deals. If you want to trade here, you have to travel to this location. So that sounds like a pretty good idea to me, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Oh. Uh, let me <laughs> let me just click on it properly this time. Okay, so yeah, let me um, buy this. So as you can see, we're buying one. Every one costs me 10 gold. So this is exactly the reason why you probably want to choose gold sometimes. It's probably going to make a pretty big difference. And I don't know whether I want to fight him again. Do we want to fight him again? Elana, a refined lady indeed. If you wish to stand a chance during our duels, I suggest you acquaint yourself with her style of magic. Well, actually, sir, I have already defeated you, and I will defeat you a second time. Let's do it. And we're now dueling in the town, as you can see right there. All right, so let's have a look. Hmm, what do we want to do? Well, we want to inflict a dispirited and deal 15 damage. That sounds pretty good to me, so that's exactly what we will do. So let's do this, 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 and this, and there we go. So that's obviously going to afflict his spirited. Then we'll do an additional 15 damage. He now has the ability to basically do no damage to me because I'm reducing his damage by 50%. So even if he does do soul burn or anything like that, I am perfectly happy with him doing whatever because we now have also the ability to play, um, not greed, but uh, we can play memory, which is empowered, as you can see, because I actually played to... Uh, well, mostly gloom, gloom words in the previous poem, so that's very nice. And we also have Forest as well, which we can play. Hmm. These are all looking mighty fine, so that is exactly what we'll do. We're going to play all of our glowing cards right here. And we're going to be able to inflict more damage reduction from him. And more soul burn as well. So he's going to be dealing even less damage this time. So very, very much looking forward to seeing what he's able to do here. Okay, select one card from your deck. Okay, he's going to deal 10 damage to me. Mostly ego cards. Nothing really to worry about there. Um, but he's still he's still kind of right behind me, isn't he? I need to do a little bit more damage, in my opinion. So maybe we want to do that. We don't have too many Brilliance cards, unfortunately. So I'm not going to make the most of Greed. So that's a bit sad, but, you know, can't really help that. What can he do? Can he actually heal himself? It doesn't seem like he can actually heal himself, so we're just going to do damage for now. He has Dispirited for one more turn as well, so that's of course going to be a pretty big deal. Yeah, so for example, as you can see, Pride, he doesn't have that empowered or anything like that, so it's unlikely he's going to play it, but you can imagine that, you know, imagine if he did that, if he had this empowered, and I hadn't Dispirited him, it would be 20 damage. That would be such massive front load damage. It would be very difficult to deal with, but thankfully we don't have to worry about it right now. Alright, so inflict one heartbreak. Yeah, I'm probably going to do that. Unfortunately, I feel like he's probably going to be dealing some massive damage to me in the next turn. Um, but we can only hope that he just doesn't heal himself, because I think I can probably take him down next turn if I get lucky. And let's just hope I get lucky. Oh no, he's doing the thing. He's doing the thing. Look at this. He is actually doing it. Oh no, he's de dealing 30 damage. Pretty significant. But obviously still relatively far away from being able to achieve victory. Oh no. I have no way of, uh, of killing him. Oh no. Okay, this is, this is bad. Inflict one heartbreak. Okay, sure. Mm, I'm going to set things up a little bit here by using a Brilliance card just in case. And we'll inflict one Dispirited just in case he decides to go for more damage as well. He doesn't have any damage cards as far as I can tell in his... No, he has no damage cards in his hand at the moment. He did, he did draw some, so that is obviously going to be a bit of a problem. But not too bad. 
as you can see. That's not too bad at all. Only one soul burn and five damage. That shouldn't be too terrible. But, uh, yes, there we go. Okay, Ooh, I am very, very pleased about this. Okay, we can just absolutely murder him now. And we actually would have inflicted two soul burn on him too. But yeah, that was much more difficult than the last time. So I assume he's just getting, uh, you know, he's getting ready. Okay, do I want to take anything from him there? I don't think so. So I'm going to take the gold and then we're going to move on. And uh, that means that I can now go back into the town if we so desire. And that's actually going to make it a lot easier for me to purchase some uh, some rations and everything. And now we can move on and we can go somewhere else. So if, for example, I can go up here and we can have a look and see what's in here. Oh, look at this. I can buy rations for five gold. Are you serious? Oh, no. Okay, wow. That is a significant amount. Okay, let's just go down to 50 gold. And then there's also, um, you know, two tabs here. So you can just tab between the two places. So you don't have to worry about clicking it on it on the map if you have issues with that. So that's good to know anyway. And uh, you can also click the rest button and that will actually take you um, forward one turn without consuming any resources. So that's something to bear in mind. All right, so let's actually go back and fight this woman. This is actually one of the women that we fought at the very beginning of the game, or very beginning of, of my um, my exploration into Verses of Enchantment. So I'm actually going to be uh, looking forward to this because I think she had some pretty cool cards, and I wouldn't mind unlocking some more of hers. Because as you can see, this is... I think I already have one of these. Yes, I do have one of these, unfortunately, because I would have loved to have gotten more of those. Maybe I can get Dawn or something. Or, you know, just inflicting more, more soul burn sounds like a fun idea to me. Anyway, if your last poem contains a brilliant word, inflict two soul burn. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to go for. So we're just going to inflict this, this, and this. We're going to do the one brilliance uh, card to activate Forest, of course, and we're just going to inflict Dispirited as well, even though she's most likely just going to be inflicting Soulburn to to us. Oh, she's curing Soulburn from herself. That's a bit weird, considering she actually doesn't have any Soulburn on her. But okay. Anyway, now we're going to do it because now she has no cure, which is absolutely fantastic, and we can actually heal ourselves as well if we so desire. Which I think I might want to go for. Can she heal herself at all? Hmm. No, it doesn't seem like it. I'm going to heal myself. I think I will heal myself this time. This might be a little bit of a lengthier battle on our hands. So I'm just going to heal myself ahead of time just to make sure that we're okay. Because at some point, maybe I'm not going to have the ability to do so. Maybe it's going to be more advantageous to be aggressive in that, in that specific moment and, well then the time has passed. Like, for example, she's now made me heartbroken, and that means that I can't restore my HP. So it really makes a huge difference. Anyway, I can inflict one heartbreak and then combo that with sorrow. And I can also cure Soulburn from myself, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So that's what we'll do right here. There we go. Sounds fun to me. And she's also heartbroken too, so she can't heal herself, and we are going to be dealing an additional 15 damage, plus the soul burn, of course, does another 7. She's also going to be playing a bunch of combo cards now. Oh dear, she activated her C card. Okay, this is a bit problematic. Oh no. With tears like those from forest bowers, the stranger, while he guessed her name, looked back with scornful smile and said, you are a villain, Darkly Man, against the Union's sacred dead, a lonely wretch in every storm. And unfortunately, it seems like there is a storm going on, because it's raining and there's sea. And my, uh, thankfully, I am not dispirited, otherwise I would be taking 40 damage in this one turn. But I can only hope that there's no way that she's actually going to be afflicting dispirited, because otherwise I would have had some big problems there. But thankfully, no, it doesn't seem like it. All right, so nothing has activated for me, unfortunately, but I can deal some pretty decent damage. Uh, two Brilliance cards. I don't have two brilliant Brilliance cards available, unfortunately, so we'll just go for the standard 20 damage and one Soul Burn, and that's going to take her down to, once again, 14 HP. Seems like 14 HP seems to be the, uh, you know, the magic number for us, and she's going to be playing Wind. Ooh, 
She's going to deal 18 damage. Wow, her deck is so synergized. I love this deck. I should probably try to build a deck like hers or something like that. I feel like that would be quite fun. Also, she has been able to rejuvenate quite a bit of her HP as well. All right, so can we actually do anything about that, though? That is the question. No, it doesn't seem like it. So we're going to have to do this, inflict Heartbreak so she can't heal herself at the beginning of her next turn, because of course Heartbreak eliminates the ability for them to heal. And I can't actually do anything else, so I'm just going to have to play something here. There's the Heartbreak coming in. So she can't heal herself for another 7, which is good, because that means my Soul Burn is just doing full damage, and it's not being healed immediately. She's now dealing 20 damage to us, we're at 23 HP. I might even lose this! Which, I, I gotta say, I'm I'm kind of surprised about. Because I would have expected myself to be able to achieve victory pretty easily here. Considering she is actually the first opponent that you come across in the game. But that just goes to show that they can be a challenge at any point. So let's have a look here. We want to deal damage and then we just want to do... Uh, well, there's not much that I can actually take here. So I guess I'm just going to take whatever. I think she's going to die. I think she is going to die once the soul burn kicks in. Yep, there we go. We were able to win the duel. Fantastic. There we go. Okay, so do I need gold? Mm, maybe, but I kind of want to get the cards from her, to be honest. So I'm actually going to be doing... Hmm. I kind of want to go for C here. If your last poem contains a gloom and two nature words, deal 20 damage. I mean, really, that's going to be so fantastic. I feel like what we should do probably is continue challenging her and continuing to try and gather as many of her cards as possible because she has a lot of nature cards, as you can see. So it's really going to make a huge difference to us. Mm. The synergy of the deck is just enormous. It, oh, I, I can't even believe it. And uh, oh yeah, I should probably also mention that the, the game also has a demo available too. So if you want to check out the demo, well, it's available. Anyway, as you can see, five gold to be able to purchase all of this. If you want to purchase some more, um, some more rations. But uh, I'm actually going to go back to the title right now because I want to show you that, as you can see, we have the ability to go for a versus here. Or we can go for Gauntlet, where I need to complete Chapter 1 of the campaign, as you can see right there. Which is absolutely fine, because obviously we have the ability to do that by going in, and so on. But obviously this is just the demo of the game, and things are going to be expanding and, you know, so on as time goes on. But I absolutely love this so far, and I love the art style as well. I love the art style, love how they are doing the cards, and I actually think that I want to fight her once again. I could even create or edit my deck, as you can see. Welcome to the deck editor. You could change the contents of your decks here. These are the cards that are already in your deck, the ones on the left. To make space for new cards, you can press any card to remove them from your deck. This is your collection of cards on the right. You can press cards to add them to your deck. You can't add cards that are already in your deck. A deck must have exactly 15 cards to be valid. As you explore the world in the campaign mode, new cards and sleeves will become available to you. Don't forget to give your deck a unique name to remember it by. And when you're done editing, press accept to save your changes. So, for example, if I wanted to um, use my new cards, like for example, if your last poem contains a passion word, deal 15 damage and things like that. And then I would just stack my deck with passion cards as much as I possibly could. And then I would try to get as many of these activatables as possible. Same thing with pride as well. So, for example, I, if I played a bunch of uh, ego and brilliance cards. So, for example, let's say I have a bunch of ego cards here, but these ego cards are not that good. This one is okay. I think I might take the queen instead of, instead of greed, because I'm not really getting greed activated that often. So I'm going to just swap that out. We have three brilliance cards. We've got some gloom cards as well. These nature cards are okay. I'm probably going to remove two nature cards and then take blood, and then we will also take pride. Because the one thing that I'm really looking forward to using is this Inflict 2 Soul Burn. I think this is absolutely fantastic. So once we've done that, we're just going to be calling this... Uh, what are we going to be calling this? Blood and Gloom. The Blood and Gloom deck, even though it's not actually like that at all. But there you go. That's what we're doing. And uh, oh yeah, I can also um, edit this. So you can see here the, uh, the actual card sleeve 
is now a little bit different too so we can change whatever we want we can change it to something like this the nice little flowers right there and then we can start the duel against flora once again and we have the same deck sleeve now oh no she's going to be insulted isn't she oh well never mind okay so here we go if your last poem contains a passion word deal 15 damage he has a passion word so that's exactly what we're going to do unfortunately i can't write a poem with only two cards so you're going to need to play three cards every single time so unfortunately that is how it's going to have to be i'm going to play pride here because i kind of i i want to use well I don't have any brilliance cards at the moment, so I want to use forest later on. So we're just going to do this. We're going to deal 20 damage, which is actually pretty respectable for a first turn. I don't think that's particularly bad, but it would have been nice to maybe inflict some some dispirited potentially. She's also going to be inflicting 20 damage to me. So we are now on a much, much more even level than I would have anticipated at this point. Okay, so we can do 10 damage with queen here, and that means that we can play an ego card... Ooh, okay, yeah. So we're just gonna do we're gonna do gloom. We're gonna do brilliance so that we can activate forest. And then we will Ah mm, yeah, unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to use sorrow here because I don't have her be heartbroken or dispirited. So we're just gonna play queen instead. That's gonna deal 10 damage. So we're just dealing really, really harsh direct damage to her at the moment. Which in my opinion is pretty good. I think that's pretty good. So let's just hope that she's not able to do something significant to us. Okay, so she is inflicting heartbreak to us, which is a little bit problematic because that means that I'm not able to heal myself, but it's only for one turn, so that shouldn't be too bad. And now we have the ability to inflict two soul burn ourselves. So that's okay. Can we inflict... Ah, here we go. Perfect. This is absolutely wonderful. Look at this. Look at what we're getting right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can inflict a spirited and then we can do 15 damage. That's going to take it down to 30 HP. And maybe, just maybe, if I'm lucky enough to draw pride, I might even be able to kill her in one fell swoop. But that very much, of course, requires quite a bit of setup. Ah, and she's also healing herself, as you might expect. Oh, she's healing herself twice. No. Okay. That's harsh. Okay, well, we can do this. Inflict two to spirit. Yeah, I'm probably going to be doing that. That sounds like a much better idea for me. Uh, we can also inflict some heartbreak so she can't restore any more health. Uh, which I think is probably going to be really, really useful. So let's do something like this. We're going to restore some health to myself. Inflict heartbreak. We're just going to inflict a bunch of, a bunch of status effects to her at the moment. And we're just going to restore ourselves here. Oh, this is this is looking like a pretty. Uh, if your opponent is dispirited, deal ten damage. Okay, she's not going to be able to do anything here. She's just going to cure the soul burn from herself and then deal five damage. She's not going to be dealing ten damage from the rain or anything like that. That would have actually been twenty damage, by the way. So yeah, now we can actually play blood as well, and we can actually do a lot of damage here. I would love to be able to... Okay, wait a minute. That's 15. That's 21. If I inflict soul burn, that's 14. That's not enough. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure how we can really do this. I want to do a brilliance and an ego card just in case pride comes up. So we're just going to inflict soul burn as well. And she still has dispirited for one more turn, hopefully. She only... Oh no, she actually only has 4 HP remaining. So this is... Ah, never mind. She's healing herself. This is where Heartbroken comes in, you see. But I don't have enough uh, enough cards that inflict Heartbreak. But of course, that's the balance, you know? You have 15 cards as a limit. So you're going to have to make those kinds of decisions. Anyway, we are able to inflict 15 damage straight up just with our Queen card. And that is basically her dead. But I can also play pride as well because i set that up in the previous turn as you can expect so this is absolutely insane because now i'm actually dealing 35 damage to her straight up but of course it's not necessarily it's not necessary because we just absolutely murdered her there you go all right so let's have a look here Ooh, i want wind i think wind is absolutely fantastic because here's the thing if we continue to duel flora we're going to get so many nature cards and the more nature cards that we use and set up wind, it's going to deal 18 damage. 18 damage. That is so incredibly good. So I'm going to take that once more. And of course, you can play against as many of them as you want. So you can play against um, Elana or you can play against the old guy once again. 
And um, for me personally, I think that Flora is is definitely my uh, my favorite deck that I've come across. Because you can see here, you can see the um, the preview of Ilana as well. She's actually not got a particularly bad deck. I think her deck is actually really good. But I just personally prefer the nature cards over the gloom cards. Because you can see here, I mean, she has some passion cards as well, which would actually be really, really good for us. But I think we did get blood from her. So that's the reason why I actually have that in my deck. Um, but like something like this, for example, if your opponent is soul burned or rejuvenated, deal 15 damage. Usually the, the enemy is going to be soul burned in some way or another if you have the ability to inflict it, of course. Um, and so obviously that's going to make a pretty sizable difference. Okay, um, <laughs> defeated again. I shouldn't go so easy on you. Well, I will probably be traveling over to um, Ilana here because I don't think you've seen me fight. Uh, did, did you see me fight her? Yeah, I think you saw me fight her once, didn't you? So we're just going to go in there once again just so that you can see exactly whether she's become a little bit more difficult. And we can do 10 damage to her straight away if we want to. Let's see what else we have available here. Mostly Gloom Words. Okay, I've got two Gloom Words here, but this is not really going to work out too well, because as you can see, we don't have a Passion card. Kind of need to save that or, um, save that up a little bit here. So, I'm going to... Oh, that's harsh. Okay, we're going to have to do Queen, Fire, and... Mm, I want Memory to... Uh, I want, oh no, I want memory. I want memory to stay with us. So I'm just going to do this. Because I really want to inflict a spirited. It makes a huge difference to how much damage. But unfortunately, she is actually dealing damage to me back now. More damage than what I did. But she is discarding one of her cards as well. And then drawing another card, in fact. Oh, okay, interesting. Ah, that is okay. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. This is actually perfect. Oh, yeah, this is this is wonderful. This is so, so good. Okay, so you know what we're going to do now, right? Yeah, we're going to inflict a spirit. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. So in other words, blood, 15 damage, because we used a passion card in the, uh, in the previous poem. And then we're going to also inflict two soul burn, which I obviously very much like. And then what we can do... Wait a minute. Hmm, yeah, no, we're going to do something like this. I think this sounds like a much better idea. There we go, soul burn. And then what we're going to do is, because we still have the ability to activate this, because we basically played all gloom cards in the previous turn, we should then be able to inflict Dispirited to her once again. But of course, she still had Dispirited, so she was unable to inflict that much damage to us at all. So that's extremely good. So we can just play this, play this, and inflict another soul burn, I guess? Maybe? Restore some health to me? I don't know. Maybe another soul burn would probably be good. Just to activate brilliance. And there we have it. That seems like a pretty good idea. She's only dealing 7 damage, as you can see right there, with, with uh, blood. But I don't think that's even activated. No, it's not even activated. So she didn't even play a passion card in the previous turn. And now I have this activated because I played an Ego and a Brilliance. Oh, that was absolutely wonderful. And now I should be able to deal massive damage. 40 damage we're actually going to be able to inflict here, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Heartbreak is not so important against Ilana because she doesn't have a huge amount of ways to restore her, her, her HP in comparison to Flora. So that's something to bear in mind. All right, so we're in a battle against Flora here because obviously I want to try to get more of her cards if at all possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to just inflict a little bit of heartbreak here. I'm not going to go for any additional soul burn right now, mostly because we already have one soul burn on her. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use Brilliance here and hopefully we'll be able to combo something in the next turn once we have drawn some more cards. Obviously, we do have a limit of 15 cards, as we know. And, well, hopefully we're going to get... Yes, there we go. We got something amazing. Look at this. This is absolutely fantastic. This means that I'm going to be able to deal 15 damage here. Actually, I'm going to be able to deal 30 damage 
in one fell swoop. That is going to be so incredible. And we can also do ego and brilliance at the same time. Yes, we can. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. This is the uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. These kinds of moments are exactly the reason why you play something like this, where you just get these wonderful combos to activate. And look at this. Look at what I'm going to do here. We have an ego and a brilliance card. And look at this. If your last poem contains an ego and a brilliance, deal 20 damage. And we're going to be we're going to be dealing, you know, uh, what 30 damage here and seven from the soul burn. So she's literally going to have n almost no HP remaining. Obviously, she does have rejuvenate, which is obviously a bit of a problem because she's now at 11 again. But I will be able to play Pride in the next one. Oh, she's doing massive damage to us as well. And she's also regenerating, but that's not going to be enough. As you can see, she is m most assuredly done. There's nothing that she can do. I am do I'm doing 40 damage to her right now. And boom, there you go. She is out of there. Very nice indeed. So now we can actually choose one card out of two. Let's see what we want to go for. I think Rejuvenated sounds like a really good idea. So I'm going to be probably taking that. And then we're just going to move on. And here we are. We've now reached Chapter 2. Across the sea, separating Old Walland from the mainland, lies Grunmeyer. Many wizards cross these green lands, a perfect opportunity to further hone your skills. Yes, indeed. The path to Grunmeyer is unlocked, and as you can see, it actually expands the map on which you are playing. And so as a result, that makes a huge difference to how many uh, rations you actually have. And you can see here, next chapter at 35 cards. So if we are able to defeat a couple more and get another 13 cards then we're going to be able to unlock chapter 3 and so on but yeah we can actually now make our way over to Grunmeyer here and that's exactly what I'm going to do however I'm thinking that I probably want to be a bit careful because I'm I'm quite, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to run out of uh going to run out of uh, of rations here what is that though what is that over here I have no idea what that is uh, maybe we're going to get the opportunity to find out. Let's move over here and see if we can... Let me just... How, how can I... I need to rest, actually. I want to rest and see whether... Is this guy going to come back round? Yeah, okay. So he is going to come back round. Let me see if I can actually just... Ooh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's going to refill in five days. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to continue onward. I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to meet this fellow. Ah, here we go. Hello. Hello, Peter. The fool of Cragmoth? Ha, is that a roaming peasant, I spy? Why, tis on such roads as these we discover all manner of women fancy, he says. Oh, yes, indeed. All right. What a, what a fantastic fellow he is. Ooh, I love his card sleeve. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Okay, wait a minute. Let me see if I can get it. All right, here we go. Mm, yep, we can inflict heartbreak, so we can deal 15 damage straight off the bat. And we can also, uh, as you can see, activate our blood card in the next turn. So we're just going to do something like this. There we go. That sounds like a good idea. Inflict some heartbreak, which means that he can't restore his HP. Ah, I see. So the king and queen cards, he actually does have a, a king card. So he's he's all about ego by the looks of things. He has a lot of ego cards. This is determined by how many cards you have in your hand, whereas the queen is determined by how many you have in the enemy's hand. So that's, mm, that's very, very interesting, because that basically means that if you are so inclined, you can construct your deck out of something that is going to provide you with more cards yourself. So you can draw more cards and then use these amazing things. For example, as you can see, wealth right here, if your hand has at least three cards, deal 15 damage. Same thing with the king card as well. If you had three cards in your hand and used wealth at the same time, you'd be able to deal 30 damage. These are such good value cards. They do so much damage for not much work, which is actually fantastic. Anyway, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to activate Pride this time around, but that's okay, because we are going to be able to do some pretty significant damage, actually. So let's just do massive damage here. 35 damage. Um, he is probably still going to have the ability to... Oh, he might be able to activate Pride. No. He did have the ability to activate Wealth, though. He does have the ability to do that. Although, maybe not, actually, because... No, no. Uh, actually, wait a minute. Is he? I'm actually not entirely sure if this is going to work, because he only has two cards in his hand now. 
So technically not, but let's actually have a look. No, no, he actually did not. So that is fantastic. That's really, really good. Right. So we don't have an ego card still, but I can play the forest card, which is nice. And we can also inflict heartbreak as well. And some more soul burn too. That's what I like to see. I'm probably going to discard Pride here because I'm thinking I would probably want to use Brilliance at some point. And we are inflicting him with a huge amount of status debuffs, which I very much appreciate. And he's now getting some... Uh, oh dear. Yeah, he's, he's, oh, yeah. He's, he's doing some pretty good damage to us right now. Not a big fan of that, but we do have the ability to heal ourselves, as you can see. And I could even heal myself even more if I included my other nature card that I just gained. Now, the queen card is going to be basically useless in this case, because it literally just does nothing. It does five damage. So I'm going to be instead just using all of my other cards, and hopefully I'll get something good in my next hand. We are causing a bit of dispirited to him as well, which means that he's going to be doing much less damage. What does Scorn do? If your opponent has less what? <gasps> oh no! If your opponent's hand has less than two cards, inflict two dispirit. Oh dear. And that's the reason why he wanted me to... Uh, discard cards and that's the reason why discard and drawing extra cards is gonna make a huge difference and you can see here I'm literally dealing zero damage because he has dispirited me twice Wow okay well the best thing that I can do right now is well um, probably just continue to uh, not not play the pride card we're just gonna play this and that's it. That's all I can really do, because if I continue to inflict Soul Burn, he's still going to continue taking damage, amusingly enough. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, one Distract, that's actually going to cause me to discard a card, which I'm not best pleased about, because I actually wanted to use Pride next turn. Uh, but I should be okay? No, no, I should be fine. Alright, yeah, let's just do that. Actually, I can't actually use Sorrow, so we're just going to do this instead. And he's more than adequately dead. But this was a much, much tougher fight. And we have unlocked his card sleeve, which I very much like. I love that that um, that design. It looks very cool. All right, so we can either now choose whether we want something from his deck. Hmm. I'm not sure if I do. These are all about losing cards. It's all about... Hmm... Yeah, it's all about forcing your opponent to lose cards or drawing extra cards yourself. Or I could go for the gold. As you can see, I only have six rations remaining. I think I'm going to go for the gold this time around. Kind of need to make sure that I am going to survive the journey to other places. Humph. Surely, tis isn't true. Thine odiferous stench did sully mine focus, peasant. Uh, he sounds, yeah, he sounds absolutely exactly how you might expect, you know. How you might expect. Anyway, uh, let's go to Kragma. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What, what is this over here? This is the Great Garden College. The tuition fee is 170 gold. And it allows you to learn nature specialization. I'm not sure what that does. But I would like to find out. Oh, dear. That's very expensive. Oh, my. Can I actually rest here for free all the time? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, this is actually perfect. So what I can do is I can literally just click here. Um, I think we're actually going to be attacking Judith, to be honest. Oh, what's this? A fresh-faced mage walking the lands of Grunmeyer. You don't carry the smell of the academy either. This ought to be fun. All right, well, hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. Anyway, let's... Um, I was just kind of wondering whether I should customize my deck before going in here but I'm actually kind of I'm quite pleased with my current play style oh she is okay this is exactly what, what I want this is the deck that I want to steal from as much as I possibly can she's a passion deck by the looks of things and she has the ability to inflict insane amounts of soul burn which is exactly what I love so I would I would really like to do that <laughs> okay so yeah we're gonna do this like this, and then I'm going to be using blood in the next turn. Ooh, this is going to be a harsh one, I think. This is going to be a hard... Yeah, she's going to cure heartbreak, but she's also going to inflict heartbreak to me. I actually don't mind about this at all, because I, she's not actually healing herself. 
So curing heartbreak makes no difference, really. Which is fine with me, you know, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so here we go. This is actually perfect. We can also do uh, inflict heartbreak for every gloom word. This is actually perfect because then I can actually cast sorrow here. That's going to deal another 15 damage. As you can see, we are inflicting heartbreak and we need that status modifier to be able to inflict that additional damage. There we go. Okay. Oh no, she's actually activated it. Oh dear. Okay, this is real bad. She is literally inflicting five soul burn on me. That means five turns. I will now be taking seven damage every single turn. Okay, we're going to have to try to beat her to it. Right. Okay, we'll go for... Uh, hmm, I have an ego card already, actually. But I can't play this otherwise. Okay, yeah, we're just going to play this right now. And we'll go for Brilliance and Passion. And that is what we'll do. Because if I get Pride to come up... And you know the Pride card, it does 20 damage. If you play an Ego and a Brilliance card together. Oh wow, she's activated so many of her things. Okay, this might be real bad. Restore 15 health to yourself. Oh no. Okay, we had her pretty low, but now now things are not turning out very well for us. Actually, maybe not too bad. We might be okay. If I deal some damage here, discard it. Oh no, discarding it. Oh, that's real bad. Okay. We want to inflict soul burn, of course. Mm, dispirited. I do want to cause dispirited, so let's do soul burn. We'll do the... No, we can't do that. We can't do that. We have to use the Brilliance card at the same time. So we're going to have to do something like duty, I guess. I, I'm, Yeah, I, I think so. And we'll just discard the Queen card because she may very well lose more cards or something like that. She may force herself to discard more cards so that we can't activate the Queen card as much. Maybe something like that. Oh, okay. So she can't use beauty right here, but she is going to be using quite a few damage uh, damage cards. Ooh, wait a minute. Look! This is not activated. She hasn't activated this. Because she doesn't have any heartbreak cards or any uh, heartbreak afflicting cards. So that's absolutely fantastic. And here's Pride. This is going to deal massive damage. And we have won. That is it. Done. Oh, yes. Because obviously Soul Burn is going to activate anyway, even if I didn't have the blood card. And that would have been, uh, been a victory. But yeah, I really like this card sleeve as well. And we can actually get some, uh, maybe I want to get some of that, or maybe I want to I get some more gold. I think I actually do want to get her cards. What does that do? Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. Mm, yeah, I actually want the gold this time. Just purely for the fact that I would like to see what the specialization actually does in the college here. Ouch, the young cub has claws, I see. Won't you play a bit more with dear old me? Ooh, I, oh, I like I like she rhymed there. I like that. All right, so, so yes, let's actually learn the nature specialization. What does this do? Welcome to your first day at school. Here you will be able to collect a new card for a set price. On the right, we have a potential card for you to collect. Pressing the accept button will send you back to the overworld with your newly learned card. You only pay the tuition fee when pressing this button. On the left, we have a poem about the card candidate. As in duels, any word that's also a name of a card is highlighted, and when pressing any highlighted word, the card on the right will change into that word. Depending on the specialization of the school, the poems will feature more words of a certain type. Try to find the card you want to learn in this, in this sea of poetry. Okay. Right, well, it's probably field, isn't it? Deal 7 damage for every rejuvenate you have. Ooh. Not sure if I want that. What about this one? Cure heartbreak from yourself. No, what about fruit? If you're... Oh, that's super powerful, but I'm not sure if I really want that. What about flood? Inflict 1 rejuvenate on yourself for every gloom word in your last poem. That sounds like a fun idea. Let's get that one. Why not? I love that. Okay, super cool gameplay element right there being able to learn cards from a certain school i'd love to be able to learn uh, more passion cards i wonder whether there's a passion school i'm sure there is somewhere or another and there is a gauntlet available face off against experienced wizards while you build your deck as you go and this is something that i actually very much wanted to try out 
the entire time. And oh, hello, we've got a bunch of new cards here. If your last poem contains an ego word, deal 15 damage. If your last poem contains an ego and a passion word, inflict two rejuvenate on yourself. There's so many really, really cool modifiers here. And we also have this. Look at this. This is what I love the most. This is, uh, this is an absolutely fantastic card. Love soul burn. Okay, let's do it. Choose a specialization. Passion, obviously. Oh, passion poetry or passion? What, what, what's the difference? Passion. Yes, inflict two soul burn. All right, wait, 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 wait. We've got a bunch of these. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, I don't like this card so much. Deal seven damage for every brilliance card. I've got three brilliance, brilliance cards in my deck right now, so that's actually kind of useful. Discard two cards from your hand and select one from your deck. Not a big fan of that. So we're probably going to get rid of that, and we'll just put this in here. Deal 5 damage for every Ego or Gloom word in your last poem. Could be kind of useful, but I'm thinking we'll probably take Restoring Health. And I'm pretty happy with what we have. So I'm going to continue onward. Okay. <gasps> Aha! So here we go. So this is basically like a, well, like a Gauntlet, as you might expect. Here you could deal Wizards in quick succession. Up here are your opponents. Beat them all without losing to claim victory. On your right is your current opponent. You can select others and view their decks, but you can only fight them in order. Once you're in front of the right opponent, you can start the duel with this button. Yes, sure, I am very, very ready. Let's do it. And we're up against Judith once again, who is, um, you know, obviously someone that I thought had a very cool deck. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Mm, okay, so we're going to inflict this. Uh, yeah, we'll just do that. Yeah, why not? Why not? Mostly passion words. That's not really going to help too much. Let's just do this. There we go. Obviously, restoring health to myself is not really going to do much, but we are just going to try and burn her down with soul burn as much as possible. Cure heartbreak, not really going to do much. Inflict one soul burn on herself. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Get her, get her going there, I guess. Ah, nice 15 damage combo, Judith. Good work. Ah, yes, we could also use Charm ourselves as well, and we can also use this too, which is going to be very, very important. And we can also deal 14 damage actually here as well. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Look at that. All of these are going to be comboed. Inflicting more Soul Burn, and inflicting 15 damage, and then 14 damage on top of that. Very nice. Oh, I like it. See, now that's exactly my point. This is just gives you so many different ways of approaching every single situation and the amount of freedom that you have in in the deck itself and the building of your deck is just insane and now i have this as well which i am now going to be able to do so i can literally inflict three soul burns straight away we can do this once again and then we can restore 10 health to ourselves if we want to or i can literally just continue to deal 10 damage uh, I think I might just go for more damage, maybe, or yeah, just go for just go for some ten damage. Then we'll see what happens. But yeah, we each have massive amounts of soul burn, which is it's a ticking clock, really, isn't it? It's a ticking clock, and we are inevitably going to die. Oh, thirty damage being come. Oh, okay, okay, hello. That is real harsh. Not sure how we're going to be dealing with this, to be honest. Let's see. Okay, so we can do... Wait, well, we can actually do a lot of damage ourselves. We need to restore some health, though, actually. Inflict two rejuvenate on ourselves. Okay, wait. Do we have an ego? Yes, we do. Okay, look at this. This is absolutely fantastic. So we're going to do this. Boom. All right. If she has 30 damage... Uh, actually, no, no. I think if she... Well, if she has 30-something damage, she will be able to beat us. Which would be very bad. Oh, almost. Almost. Yeah, she activated that at the last second. There's another 10 damage coming in. Oh, this is, this is coming down to the wire. This is coming down to the wire. But I'm absolutely fine because we are going to be able to inflict Rejuvenate on ourselves. We can also inflict 15 damage right here. And we can also uh, do more Soul Burn. I think I might have too many Soul Burns, to be honest, in my deck right now. So this is a little bit problematic, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Uh, there. Okay. Whew. We managed to achieve victory. Oh, that was actually 
remarkably close. And now we can choose a specialization here. Passion, poetry, or heartbreak. I could go for that. Ego, no, I think I'm going to go for passion, poetry right here. So now we can actually see whether we want to exchange our cards once again. I'm not a big fan of power, I got to say. So maybe we want to go for blood. I think we'll go for blood instead. And also fruit sounds like an absolutely amazing thing to go for too. Um, and we could also go for distract. Being able to discard a card or forcing the opponent to discard a card might be really useful. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do that. Um... Yeah, we only have one Ego card available at the moment as well, which is not exactly great. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna actually remove Kiss here because I think that too many Soul Burns might not be the, the way to go, hilariously enough, even though I personally like them a great deal. But yes, anyway, this guy, as you can see, you can actually take a look at, at every single person's deck before you go in. He is literally Ego, Gloom, and Passion only. This is going to be very interesting to see what we can do against him. But for now, I'm going to end this episode off here. And if you would like to check out Verses of Enchantment and add it to your Steam wishlist, there is a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.